Every once in a while, there is a collaboration between a PC company and a brand that gets a lot of folks excited. Now is one of those times, and that is the Neon Genesis Evangelion collaboration with Asus. Luckily, we got all the parts, and with the help of Cable Mod and Seagate, we made a build absolutely worthy of this collaboration. Okay, let's do some story time, guys. Uh, you may not know this, but there actually was a previous collaboration with a hardware company and Neon Genesis Evangelion, and that was with MSI. And I actually built that PC. It had a motherboard, a cooler, a case, and finally a PSU. Don't get me wrong, they were beautiful for sure, and the build actually came out awesome, but it didn't feel like a PC collaboration worthy of such an iconic anime cult franchise. Enter Asus and their collaboration with Evangelion, which unlike the MSI Project E, swung for the fences. And each of these things look awesome. We are talking about t-shirts, AIO, high-end motherboard, crazy PSU, monitor, keyboard, mouse, router, mouse pad, headset, external drive, and not to mention both a 3080 and a 3090 special edition GPU. When we did the live stream of the build, we had arguments on chat on whether we should do the GPU vertically or horizontally because no matter what angle you looked at this GPU, it looks absolutely awesome. I mean, believe me guys, sometimes that's not a thing. I mean, look at this build, it looks so good. So when Asus pinged me and asked if I would be interested in building a build using all of the components, I was like, heck yeah, this is one of my favorite anime franchises from my childhood. And the parts, I mean, we were gonna make sure we were gonna make one heck of a build. <laughs> I mean, it's right here. When Jay did the Gundam build, I was very jealous, but he used stock cables. And I was like, blah, no, nah, we can't do that. Nah. So I reached out to Cable Mod and they were happy to oblige. Next up, it was storage. So I pinged my friends over there and I was like, hey, could we get like a couple Fire Cuda 530s? And did they come in clutch? So we had to use something high end for the CPU as well, which meant eh, 12400F. That's right, baby. Perfect. Wait, what? Uh, so a, a, a 12400F isn't, it's gonna be a 12900K. So let's check out the build. Then we're gonna show you some incredibly sexy B-roll. I mean, I know you've been, I know you've been looking at this, but we actually made it look really pretty. And then let's see what this thing did actually in testing and thermals and all that jazz. Okay, so at the core of this, we're gonna start with the Core i9-12900K. And then this is when we start the Evangelion parts. So first one, we've got the ROG Maximus Z690. This is their Maximus Z690 Hero Evangelion. Huge shout out to Seagate for their sponsorship of this. Uh, so we're gonna be using the uh, Fire Cuda 530s. We'll have a total of five terabytes of storage. We're gonna be using Corsair Dominator Platinum. This is 32 gigs at 5,600 megahertz. Another Neon Genesis Evangelion part. This is the ROG Ryujin 2 360 ARGB. Guys, this thing is sick. So this is the Neon Genesis uh, Asus Evangelion RTX 3090. Probably one of the best looking uh, cards that I've actually ever seen from here. This is the Evangelion 1000 watt Thor 2. So this has also been evangelion out. It's got the uh, OLED display. It's got the 16 connector. So if I wanted to do a 3090 Ti, you could. Cable Mod provided us custom cables for this build uh, just to make sure thematically we were all on point. So we got custom cables here. We're replacing all of the stock um, fans inside the case uh, with the QL140 RGBs. So that is all of the parts. Asus also sent us this ROG Strix NVMe SSD enclosure. I figured we'd show this off as well. I think this is a, I'm pretty excited about this. And now you've got a really cool portable SSD. You guys ready to see this motherboard? Look at this. Oh my gosh, look at that motherboard. Oh, that's a big peel. That is such a great looking motherboard. And then also on the back, you also got all of the writing and stuff as well. Dang, that was so good. Dominator never disappoints. Now we're just at the point where we can start getting things inside of the case. 
Ugh. Check out the top. This is purple. They've made this purple. Really, really cool. The straps are actually just a little bit nicer. You can see there's a lot of like just details. Gonna get it opened up. And I've already installed all the 140s in it already. So it's all cable managed and stuff like that for 140s. So we don't have to worry about that. Not gonna make it crazy. You guys know how to install fans, but we're gonna go ahead and open this up too. There we go. These are for the PSU shroud. There was a lot of attention and love with this particular case. There it goes. There we go. So now all of our shroud is out. Yeah, all the screws are in. Why don't we put the PSU in? The PSU is probably in the coolest box. It's a nice box. So I probably won't get rid of the box. Okay, so let's get our AIO in. <sighs> so heavy. This comes off. Okay, mounted. Let's go ahead and peel all this. There's a lot of peels here. Peel, peel, that one's peeled. Peel, peel. Okay, lots of peels on that. Okay. I didn't peel the front picture yet, but I will. So here's the mess that we have currently. So that's what the cables will look like. Now we just need to clean up the bottom here. Okay, here's our GPU. Oh shoot, I lost a screw. Crud, oh, almost threw that thing. Let's get the GPU in and we'll figure that out afterwards. Okay, well, it's gonna be interesting, hold on. Got it. There we go. So this is the back. You guys saw earlier, it looks clean. The question is, can I compress that enough to get it in? There we go. That looks really clean. So that's all on again. Okay, all plugged in. Power. We see any lights yet? There it is. I could see just how much love Asus put into putting this together. This is a notable upgrade from the stock Helios, by the way. It has a nicer shroud, it has better screws, plus the cable management for the case stock was some of the best I've ever seen. We saw CTU temps up in like the low 90s, which makes sense. When I did a 0.055 undervolt, we got temps down into the high 70s, which meant, hey, overclock. So I now have an all core 5.1 gigahertz overclock on P cores and a four gigahertz overclock on E cores. So the CPU is good, it's baked, it's cooked, it's happy. What about that RTX 3090? Close case, we're looking at 49 under load and then rendering all those video games we saw things pop up to 70. So hit me with those gaming numbers. We got Cyberpunk 2077 at the highest possible presets. We are looking at 125.99 frames per second. For Tomb Raider running at 1440p, we saw an average frame rate of 230. For Metro Exodus also running at 1440p, we saw things sitting at 106.93. Dirt 5, 1440p with ultra high graphics settings, we're sitting at 147.7. We got Borderlands 3, we saw FPS at 118.73. For Apex Legends running on low visual settings, we saw an 
average of 274.8 frames per second across our multiple game sessions. For Valorant, we saw 520.7. For Fortnite, again at 1440p on low visual settings, set for competitive play, you're sitting at a still very fluid and high 349.7, which pretty much is pretty good for any 244 hertz monitor. So. That's it, I think we accomplished what we came out to do, but it's not about what I think sometimes. I'd love to know what you think. So tell us your thoughts, and you know what? Maybe you could win a little cash in the process. First and foremost, you need to leave a quality comment down below along with liking and subscribing to the channel. Now when I say quality comment, it doesn't need to be positive, it just needs to be something you liked or didn't like about the video. Though, what is there not to like about this video? But I'd love to know if something surprised you about the build or the video anyway. Just not, hey, I deserve to win, and can I have all those parts for free or something similarly weird or lame? You also need to assure we have a way to reach you via your YouTube profile, like your email. So put your email in your YouTube profile because we will be giving away $25 to one lucky comment below that is worldwide as long as you can accept PayPal or Venmo. So. What did you guys think of the Evangelion Asus collaboration? What do you think of the build? Is there anything you would change? What other collaborations would you love to see from like a company like this? I mean, I know we had the Gundam one. Robotech, anybody? Love to see that one, or Macross. But would love to know all of that and more down in the comments below. Now, while you're down there, make sure you slap that subscribe button, whip that like button, and ring that notification bell so you get a notification each and every time we post a new video right here on Robotech. Did you know we have a live stream channel for specialty builds and events? We actually built this entire PC on the channel live. So check out Robotech Live down in the description below so you can like and subscribe there to know when we go live and you don't miss when we do awesome builds like this. If you have questions about this build or other tech related questions, then check out our amazing Discord server over at discord.gg slash Robotech. It's filled with other tech and PC enthusiasts that love to share their thoughts and ideas on these very subjects. Are you looking for cheap tech? Then check out at robytech.com or at robytechdeals on Twitter, where we have our guy Tom scouring the internet for the best deals on tech from PC components, televisions, video games, you name it. Finally, you can follow me and my entire team on all the other socials at Robitech absolutely everywhere. We hope you absolutely enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed building this build, and we look forward to seeing you on the next one.